Malachi chapter 4, last chapter in the Old Testament, before 400 years of silence that weren't going to be broken until the coming of John the Baptist. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. You shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses my servant, which I commanded unto him in Oreb, for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, the Apostle Paul characterizes the last days as a time of extreme selfishness. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 2, and so forth, tell us that it will be a time when men and women are lovers of their own selves, when society loses even its own natural family affection, will be lost. In other words, there'll be such a, a mentality of selfishness that even human life in the eyes of man will, will take on an insignificance. As long as I can be happy, it matters nothing of what happens to others around me. Paul says there'll be a form of godliness. There, there will be always, perhaps, the name of God mentioned to some degree in societies throughout the world including our own. And there will be even learning about God, but that learning will never bring those who are experiencing it to a place where they are yielded to God. This learning will never give release, as it is, to a godly influence, the power of the Holy Spirit in and through them to their generation, because they are learning, but they're learning within the context of their own selfishness. There is no understanding of God in that context. John in Revelation chapter 3 says, The testimony of this church age is that I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. As long as I have my needs met, my future is secure, my doors lock at night without fear of being broken into, my pension plan is, is in place. As long as I have these things, I'm in need of nothing. I can go to church on Sunday morning or do whatever I want to do. And this becomes the testimony of a selfish generation. You see, a selfish generation, beloved, you have to understand, will produce its own church. The society will produce a church just like it. Jesus himself said in Matthew 25, there will be a people at the end of time whose cry is, give us, that's all they've ever known. When calamity comes, they have no inward working of God, they have no power to stand, they have no voice, they, they don't know how to cope with calamity and they run to those who can't stand and all they've ever known is give us, give us, give us. Their, their whole pursuit of God has been for, for an inward lust that they want to be satisfied and somehow feel that Christ came to satisfy that inward lust. There will be a time of great confusion in the world and even in the supposed church world. Jesus said they will say, here is Christ, or there is Christ. There, there will be these voices saying, here is Christ. In other words, making a, not only a physical place, but perhaps a spiritual presentation. This is Christ. Or there is Christ. And Jesus said, don't believe it. Don't believe it. In the last days, there are going to be many pointing and saying, Christ has arrived and here he is, or Christ is over there, or this is my version of Christ. And it will be all false. As a matter of fact, Paul says in Thessalonians, at the end of time, there will be a delusion sent by God upon all who receive not the love of the truth. And I, I know no greater delusion that can come on any heart than we begin to follow a God of our own making. And even if we call him Jesus, but he's not the Jesus of the Bible, we begin to follow him. And, and, and Paul says there'd be this delusion that will fall on those who didn't love, the, they, they wanted a truth, but not the truth. And they wanted truth that was palatable and fit into their concept of the pursuit of life and liberty and happiness and all these other things. They wanted this, this type of Christ and so pushed away any other Christ that didn't conform to that image of their, their own selves and their own future. 
And so a great delusion will be coming upon many people, and it is already here today. Malachi was the last voice of the Old Testament, and the Holy Spirit, through him, identified a voice which would arise to announce the coming of the Messiah. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1, he says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 10, Jesus himself identifies this voice in Malachi chapter 3 as belonging to John the Baptist. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 10, he said, For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Now, you remember the ministry of Elijah in the days of the, of the books of the kings. Elijah was a man who was raised to confront a backslidden generation. of people who were supposed to be people of God, but were led astray by other theologies. And Elijah was a man, a voice that God raised. And his life, not just his message, but his life was a contrast. When the prophets of Baal were leaping on and off their altars of self-proclamation, crying out, lancing themselves to prove their sincerity, Elijah very sincerely and quietly just built another altar. He picked out 12 stones, and he, as all this activity is happening, Elijah is, is building another altar. And when the people had exhausted themselves, he stood back, and prayed a very simple prayer. He said, Lord, you are God. I'm your servant. You've sent me to do this. Now come and turn the hearts of this people back that they may know you are God. You see, that was all that was in his heart is to turn the people's hearts back to God. There will be a voice raised before the, the second coming of Jesus Christ, which is the time of judgment upon the whole world. And this voice will be raised, and it will be a voice that turns this tide of selfishness in society back again. It's important to understand this. It's a time of selfishness, Paul says. And God says in the midst of this time of incredible selfishness, there is a voice going to be raised that will turn the hearts of fathers back to their children again and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest they smite the earth with a curse. And this voice will be pronounced. It will be widespread because it will stop the Lord, he says, from smiting the earth at that before the appointed time with a curse. It will stop the world as it is from being devoured by the curse of sin. What could this voice be? Now, it is possible that there are specific anointings. It is possible that God will raise voices above the crowd. It happens throughout history. It's happened all throughout the church age. You'll, you'll find countries and continents lulling into a false spirituality and God will raise up a man, a woman of God, a voice. This voice will call again the church back into righteousness. But you see, it is my personal belief, and I want you to underline that because I'm not trying to give you any kind of new revelation. It is my belief that this voice has been here since the day of Pentecost. It is my belief that this voice is in the church of Jesus Christ. It is my belief that God is saying through this scripture that I'm going to have a church. I'm going to have a spirit-empowered people in the last hours of time. And in the midst of confusion, in the midst of selfishness, in the midst of all types of uh, things that even the devil himself is trying to sow into the nations and even into the house of God, I am going to have a voice in a people who are surrendered to me. A voice that will come out of the wilderness like John did. A voice that will disappear in the midst of all of the calamity and confusion and just silently build another relationship with God. A voice that God says I can flow through. A voice that I can touch. A life that I can be glorified in. A person that can walk into the midst of a neighborhood and through their life I can, I can speak to that generation. They may not even have to say anything. People will just look at them and I will speak through them. You see, in, in times past, it was only specific individuals. Elijah, who would have the Spirit of God come upon them. And John the Baptist, this is pre-Calvary, have the Spirit of God come upon him. But remember, the prophet Joel said, there's coming a last day when the Spirit of God comes on all flesh. All flesh, not just a select few anymore. But Christ says, I'm going to have a church, and I'm going to dwell in that church. And the same Spirit 
that raised me from the dead is going to be on them, quickening them, changing them, molding them from image to image and glory to glory. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 5, speaking of Christ, he says, I will come near to you to judgment, and I'll be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swears and against those that oppress the hireling and his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and the turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. I'll come near to you into judgment. I believe the voice is not necessarily somebody walking around pointing out everybody's sin. No, I'm talking about men and women who are living right. And their lives are a voice. Their lives are a testimony against those who are living in rebellion to God and somehow think that they have a security with God in eternity. Their lives, these are Christian people who are not turning to, they don't turn to sorcery, they turn to God. They, have a, they, have, they don't have a muttering, peeping uh, word about the future. They have a sure word. Their eyes are fixed. They know where they're going. The very, the very fact that they are fixed on eternity and they are living in a constant trust in God is a, is a voice of God speaking to a confused generation through them. They don't commit adultery. They live with the person that God has given them as their marriage partner. They don't walk away because it becomes inconvenient. They stood before God and they made an oath before God and they took vows before God and they don't walk away because times get tough and their, their lives become a voice for God in the midst of a generation that are so selfish that the moment it's inconvenient I just walk out and cast myself as it is on the mercy of God. I believe in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 7. He said, even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me and I'll return to you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God, yet you have robbed God. But you say, how have we robbed thee? He says, in tithes and offerings. I do believe that the voice of God will call the church of Jesus Christ back to obedience again. I believe the true church is hearing now the cry of the Spirit. I do believe it with all my heart. And they're asking the question, God, you're saying return, but how are we going to return? And the Lord says, I just want you to come back to obedience and faith. I want you to obey me, and I want you to trust me for the strength to walk in that obedience. Let's walk this together. You, form, you have the desire. You call out to me in faith, and I will perform it. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.